Welcome back to building a tiny house in my yard. We are at the roofing section, so there's going to be a lot of stuff going on in this episode to do with the roof. What's going to happen is we're going to do our normal inspection. So Max is here and he's going to have a quick look around. Before the day starts, I take him for a walk. So he has a look around the house to see how far things are progressing and if things are up to scratch. He's a far sight better than the actual inspector. Uh, I'll keep that to another ex uh, episode, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff that I noticed. Um, but the inspector said, yeah, it's fine. Like, as in he passed each stage of the work, but I could clearly see things were not done. So it seems like these days, it's it, the bar's been set very low, which is why builders are doing different standard of work. Um, I'm going to keep this to another episode, so you keep that in mind. But the rafters and the joists have arrived. What are we looking at here? This is going to be what the ceiling is going to be screwed onto. And in the architect's plans, they actually have requirements for the rafters and joists to be the same size. I'll give you an idea what I mean by that. So it's 7 inches by 2 inches. That's how big these rafters are. I'm surprised at how big they need to be. In the past, our rafters were 3 inch by 2, 3 by 2s. And that's what our old ceilings are held up with. So there's like a bit of loft space for storage and things. But considering we have to use these bigger beams that we're losing nearly an extra an extra foot, basically, um, in terms of ceiling, uh, rafters and joists combined. You'll see by the end of this episode what I mean. Uh, there also is a, a plate. Uh, so we're building a tiny house in the UK. There's going to be quite a lot of time lapse in this episode as well to show you how this is progressing. Um, these are the little plates they use so these, they call them plates, but it's not actually plates. What they use them for is a wall plate. So when the wall finishes, like the block wall is when it finishes, um, they have cement bed and then they have this wood on the top of the wall. And then the joists and everything get screwed into this wall plate. So it's like an easier place to screw into. So this goes around the perimeter of the front and back where the lean to roof will be. And they cement this in place with like a bed of mortar. And it seemed a little bit confusing to me because they, it's basically just, it doesn't, it's not bricks. So you can uh, cement in some stuff and hold it there, but it's not actually fixed to the wall in any way. So I'll show you a little bit about that because I saw the plans and there's extra things in there that weren't really followed. But yeah, you'll you'll see as things progress. So slowly as the project's getting a little bit more complex, we are seeing a little bit of like, not corner cutting, but just things that I'm noticing. Again, I'm, I'm, I want to keep these episodes individual so you can see what's happening at each point of this build. But there are things to keep in mind that need to happen. And if you don't have a slight bit of knowledge around the building requirements and building regulations, you may just miss it. And things like this, the inspector's missing as well, which is very confusing to me. The reason you have an inspector is to so they can tick off stuff and say, yeah, actually, you know what, that's up to scratch. But I think there's been a standard set these days where uh, builders have got used to what is being passed and then they don't they won't do extra work if it's being passed. So they'll say, wait, well, the, the inspector's passed it. Why are you asking for extra stuff when... It's passed, but yeah, if that makes sense. So there's, yeah, hidden stuff there. But basically, they get a bed of mortar, so sand and cement mix. It goes on the inner wall. So the inner wall is the block wall, and that's where the wall plate will be attached to. Um, when I say attached, we'll actually have metal brackets which screw into the wall. The reason they have that is if there's ever like a storm, there have been storms in the past in this area where the roofs have been rip ripped off the, the ceiling. Roofs have been lifted off the ceiling. The, the roofs have been lifted ripped off the buildings and um, so these like storm straps kind of thing hold the face plate wall plate into the wall to give it more rigidity so the roof can't just be lifted off if there's like a tornado or something so you'll see they also something else uh, they brought metal lintels which were insulated for the door and the windows but then they took them back and they said that because it's not a second floor on this building we don't need to use those so you tell me in the comments, is that right? Is that what the situation is? But they use just the wall plate, which bridges over the windows and doors as like a, a lintel type situation. So, I mean, the, the inspectors passed it. So I'm assuming it's within regulations. But if it wasn't within regulations, why would it be passed? It's that question, that funny thing that happens. So here's the roof uh, rafter, no, joists. So these go 
along and these are what the ceiling internal plasterboards will fix to so they level these off and then there's other elements of this process that you'll be interested to see which will be uh, the joists being put into place so overall we're getting at a point now where things are being progressing the uh, internal blocks are done the walls are done the insulation's been done and there's little episodes of this as we're going along. We're on episode 14, I think, or something now, aren't we? So we're doing well. If you haven't already seen, you can see the playlist of all the episodes of how I got here. It will be a tiny house of sorts, maybe a studio, home, a kitchen room kind of, you know, area type situation. Uh, I'll plan the layout. I've been playing with an app, which I'll include in the description of this uh, video and the comments. There's a pinned comment where you'll see a link to an article where I'm basically writing up as I'm going through this process. It's ever evolving. So slowly it's getting bigger and bigger and better and better. So I started off with like the basic episodes that I'm covering, but then I'm going to include the extra bits about builders, architects, how much it costs, how much you should budget, extra things to keep an eye on, questions to ask builders and all that kind of stuff. So there's like a frequently asked uh, section in there and i'm also going to put individual episodes like the floor the walls the internal walls the insulation as a separate um, articles for you to have a look at so at least you've got somewhere to look at uh, if you're planning this yourself like a small studio build i did also contemplate after the at this point i'm like three days ahead of where you are so right now what you're seeing is the uh, joist being put in but currently we're on the 10th of february and they've actually just done the first layer of uh, slate on the roof so they've done the joist the rafters inspectors been and passed it and now we are actually doing uh, joists so tomorrow they will actually have the roof completely done with all the roof laid with tiles um so that's just give you an idea like we're, we're in real time situation at the moment so you're probably going to see this in like three or four days time uh, where we'll actually be a little bit ahead of where i am so normally each day i film the following episode so you'll see here we had 11 joists they put on the ceiling and this is another thing they know how big the room is i don't understand why they didn't just order all the joists at one time like for example they ordered three less so this is what i mean this is what holds the wall plate onto the wall it's like a big metal l bracket they screw it onto the wall and they hold the joist on the inside of the building to stop the roof being ripped off if it ever gets really windy or tornado happens which they have happened once since we've been here so you see they basically put them on the wall uh, they normally well they put four on each side there's eight in total on this bottom wall plate uh, later on you will see in the next episode where they've actually got the ceiling joists also rest on a wall plate and they weren't gonna include these metal straps and i saw that and i was like well you need to put straps on that and there's things where i'm noticing things and i'm having to ask for it to be done then it's being done uh, like for example the insulation wasn't done all the way up till the up top of the wall and it seems like they put the roof joists in and if i didn't say anything would they have not put the insulation in so it seems like there's an element of you have to be on your feet with this because if you miss it they and you don't say nothing they just carry on and assume oh yeah they, they don't know what they're doing so i'll just do what i need to do so there's little things like this that just put everything down so i mean you should do the same quality of build regardless of if the client knows what's going on or not and you'll notice i'm hanging about a lot here to make sure things are being done now because if i'm not there how would i know what's been put behind the wall because the inspectors aren't checking that they're taking stuff off and it's just very confusing to me that this level of build with the level of application fees you pay and you you'd assume you got an architect and then you've got an inspector like for example this see the insulation is not all the way up the wall there's like a big gap and then i had to ask for that to be done there's a couple of those things that i've noticed i'm going to keep them in another episode so things to keep an eye out on things where maybe i don't know if it's cutting corners or saving money or whatever the end goal is but if you don't notice it it might be a bit uh, confusing uh, how that can happen so they put the wall plates uh, on and they fix them in place with the metal brackets then they started putting a couple of extra beams on the roof so they could finish building that block wall up so the block wall will continue past the beams to hold them in place and then carry on up the wall so then the the upper rafters can rest on the upper wall it'll make sense when you see the video you know what i mean um, so overall it's it's looking a little more there's also elements of this it looks bigger now it looks small then it looked bigger and now the roof's on it looks smaller again i think it's just the light getting into the building and it makes it look bigger or smaller so you'll have different ups and lows of the extension you'll be thinking is it worth the amount of effort we're going through for this extra space uh, it's going to be about 160 square foot extra of this entire floor space of this area so overall it's a good amount of space i have seen extensions being done for lower 
uh, volumes and I don't know if it's worth this hassle, the amount of stuff we're doing here and the amount of cost involved for this extra space. So you'll see here, this is the metal brackets they're screwing down and they're screwing these down. Later on, I'll show you what I mean. There's two different types of screws. Some screws that they're using to drill directly into the thermal light and they didn't use plugs or anything, so it's a special type of screw that you don't need plugs for, and then they had the other ones as well. So you'll see here they're putting these rafters on the roof, and the reason they're doing this is they're bringing the blocks up and using the rafters as like a platform, so it's like multi-purpose, so they don't have to have a scaffolding system set up. So these blocks were used overall. Remember the block delivery we had in the previous episode? I thought there was a lot of blocks, but then I remembered, okay, the back wall's four foot high, so they're going to have to block all of that up. So that's where these extra blocks are being used. So they cut the blocks in half, and then they put them between the rafters. Uh, rafters? No, the joists. So joists are the lower ceiling joists, and the rafters are the ones that go diagonally up the wall. Diagonally, like as in up. Not not, not diagonally, like, um, what's it? Yeah, you know what I mean. So... Yeah, so they mixed up some more cement and they cut the blocks down. They fitted them into the the spaces. And then after that, you'll see more.
So I wanted to draw your attention to this as well. So considering these guys have built a number of extensions in the area, I just thought they'd be a little bit more clued up. So for example, using a square to cut out the, the rafters so they can slot into the plate on an angle. It's just little things like this that didn't really go to plan and they had to do a couple of shots at it. And it just seems to me like, you know, if you're a wood joist or wood woodworker or what would you call it? Woodworking? No. What's it? It's an actual term for these guys that do the roofs, isn't it? Like woodwork guys, uh, carpenters. They would normally just whack this out in a straight go. It's like a simple diagonal like cut that you're going to join onto. So look at that. What's what's going on there? It's like they gave it three attempts and I was just like, I had to make a cardboard template to show them how to do it. And they were using a square. They had the square, but it's like they've got all the tools, but in some cases they don't know how to use them. I'd rather just use a cardboard and show them, okay, this is the angle. This is what you're going to cut out. You're going to cut out a little triangle that fits onto there. So it's just... In the end, they worked it out, but it's just, I don't know, I shouldn't have to, yeah, what do you think? What you do is get a cardboard, put it on the corner and cut out the shape you think it is and see if the cardboard fits in. And if it does, you use that as your template, put it onto each wood and just cut that out. It doesn't have to be too intense. It's maybe just, I'm just making it simplified, but I, I, the elements that I could have done better, there's a multiple elements I could have done better. But that's the point where you've hired builders to do the job. You can't then dictate to them. Well, you can dictate to them what you want, but they're doing it in their way. Um, there's elements of this that, that, for example, I should have hired a digger, dug out all the foundations in one day, and then asked them to come and do the damp proof layer, do the insulation, build the walls up to damp, damp proof layer, build the outer brick, uh, you know, the bricks, uh, bricks, the outer layer, like the brick layer. I should have insulated it myself because I would have taped up the gaps, done it properly, used the little, um, you know, the when you the holders in between the brick, what you call the ties, with a, a stop that stops the insulation from moving, and then said, okay, now do the internal wall. But then I would have been more involved. Do I want to be that involved? Or I should have just hired a labourer and told them what to do. Because there's just little things that are very, I don't know, frustrating because i'm sure they know what they're doing and they are good at what they're doing but when you see corners being cut you know they can do it so why are they cutting corners but I, sp I suppose that's with every builder if you're not clued up they're just going to try and save whatever they can save or yeah you know so you'll see the upper wall plate is in place now the joists have gone in the rafters are connected here they're going to cut off uh, the extra overhang and you'll notice look at this block here you see that block but yeah leaving that block they cut it in half and then join two together even here now you'll see the bottom uh, wood on the wall inside the wall has got metal ties down the top one hasn't got ties down so if i didn't notice well i kn i knew there should be something there but i didn't say anything i kept it till the last last minute to see are they just going to do it later am i just expecting them to do it now because that it makes sense to do it now but no they carried on carried on carried on they cemented it started putting the rafters in and if i didn't stop them or say something i think the roof would have been on and then they would have tried to screw screws in with the roof on where you can't reach your hand in there to, to screw it so like even the the cement was mixed a little bit uh too runny and like it just kept running down the wall it wasn't as thick as it should have been to hold it in place so little things like this is where i get a little bit confused but overall they've done a number of these extensions in the area Bits that you can see look very nice. The brickwork's excellent, the roofs look excellent, but the bits you can't see, like in internally, the insulation, the little ties, the little screws they're using, the types of cuts they're doing, which you won't be able to see in the finished product. It seems like they're not putting as much effort in there. So I think that would let them down a little bit. If they just focused on that, then they'd be perfect builders. Um, and maybe at the moment, I'm giving them like two and a half stars out of five because just because i could do elements a little bit better than what they're doing so overall it's just the matter of will we get a usable structure at the end of it will it be in line with regulations well if the inspectors passed it then yeah but seeing what i'm seeing you know you'll, you'll notice i'm always hanging about to see what's going on because i've had feedback from other people that i've had work done and they said well they're excellent at building building but little finishing touches they're not as good at so maybe they should have a third person who handles the finishing just to pay attention to that because i'm a bit of a control freak anyway so i'll prefer to do it in a specific way and like you know if i'm doing roof joists finish the roof joists off everything that needs to be done now so if i put a roof on i don't want to be tying in different things that obstruct me from doing that task later on because the roof's in place like you know why would you leave that so late it's, yeah anyway 
Um, even the insulation, for example, that insulation, they put the roof joists on and the, see the insulation, I asked them to put the insulation in. I said, well, now that you put the roof on, well, not roof, the ceiling joists, you know that you need to put insulation in, don't you? Also the brick, now this is the finishing of the, the roof. So you'll notice the wall is built up to a specific level and then they're just slanting the roof so that the, the little uh, extra buttons for the roof slates overhang slightly over the wall. So now they broke down here and they put a lot of mortar down. If it was me, I would have had a large diamond blade cutter and just cut like the, the bricks that were there instead of breaking them. Just cut them and a slant. That would have looked a lot better. But I understand that there's going to be a fascia board covering this anyway. So maybe it's like, you know, I don't know, apples and bananas. or Is it apples and oranges or roundabouts and swings? What do they say? You know, depending on who's doing it. But obviously every builder will say, oh, yeah, I can do it better. But th there's no point of them commenting and saying that because it's when you're there, what you're doing. And you, you know you can do it. It's just you're letting yourself down when you cut corners that nobody else would see. But we know you're cutting corners. So, yeah. If you catch him out, if you catch him out in a specific way where you're not calling him out on it, but just asking, oh, should this be like that? Can we have this done like this? If it needs to be extra payment, you know, I, I'm willing to pay, but you just do it properly. So it's just trying to say that in a nice way where you, they carry on working and they don't throw their tears down and say, oh, do it yourself. I probably will end up doing The next one I'm going to do, I'm going to do it myself. How about that? And uh, you know what? At this point, I should have made it out of wood. That's another thing I'm thinking about. If I made this all, the foundation level, fine up to damp proof layer, then I should have used wood. I would have got a lot more internal space. I would have done all of it myself. It would have been better. Anyway, next episode, you're going to be seeing the slate roof coming on. And that's going to be interesting because there's a lot of the, 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 the to be honest, the slate roof, based on how they started cutting it and putting it on, I was quite pleased with that. So stay tuned. If you haven't already, subscribe and the next episode will be on screen. I'll see you in the next episode.